Oh, hello everyone, and welcome to Michael's Retro Game Reviews. Now, I know I said my next review was going to be Panzer Dragoon Saga for the sake of Sam, but that's going to take a bit of work. So I thought, as a quickie, something to tide you over, and to give me something quick and exciting to do, I thought I'd delve into an old classic on the Amstrad CPC 464, Dizzy the Ultimate Adventure. Now, my earliest game memories were from playing the Amstrad. It was a brilliant computer, it was like the Rolls Royces of 8-bit computers at that time, and it had one of the best versions of Dizzy on it. The game was made by the Oliver Twins, and it was published by Codemasters. Now, the version I am reviewing is the Amstrad version. Now, graphics, I'd say, are slightly better, but the biggest thing has got to be the music. There's only two tunes from, from what I've discovered from playing the game. You've got one at the title screen, and you've got one during the game. And both of them are really good little tunes. Simple, but very atmospheric. You know, they're definitely getting the mood for the game, and as a 10-year-old as a kid, listen to these tunes, they're very powerful, and they definitely leave a lasting impression on you. I imagine if you were someone playing this game now for the first time, you probably wouldn't enjoy them, or you probably wouldn't get into them. I think it's one of the things you have to have been there at the time. And I was lucky as a kid I got to play these games, and my earliest memories was playing these games, and hearing these tunes, and it just it leaves such an impact on you. The gameplay is quite simple, basically, you go, uh, the entire world is basically one big long screen, with a series of screens in that. So as you like cross over to one, it goes to another picture, and so on and so on. Now the idea is, you're supposed to get the ingredients you need and make the potion, of course. It's a very tricky game, and I'll be honest with you, I've never completed it. It's one of them games that, since I was about probably 10 years old, every year, whether it's you know on the Amstrad, which unfortunately I don't own anymore, or emulation, I always, I always have to give it a go. I never ever complete it, but I always get a little bit further each time. It's an addictive game, and the Amstrad was very, it was a very, it's very limited. I mean, you've got limited amount of colours, resolution, and there's very little, there's very little you can do on that. But this game always stood out for me. I always thought the graphics were, they did, they did the job very well, you know, and the music as well. I mean, I know on the Spectrum version there wasn't music because it wasn't. I mean, I don't, I, I can't say it technically. I know that the Spectrum was not really capable of doing like both video and sound at the same time. But the Amstrad, on the other hand, could do both very well. And this is by far the best version. I mean, the title music is absolutely fantastic. And the same with the gameplay itself. There's a great tune in the background. Now, they're very simple 8-bit tunes, but... I don't know, they, 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 they leave an impression on you. Especially as a, as a kid. I think part of the reason why I like this game so much is nostalgia. They're great little games to, to go back to. I mean, Dizzy spawned a huge series. In the core Dizzy series, you have eight games. The first one being Dizzy the Ultimate Cartoon Adventure. The second being Treasure Island Dizzy. Fantastic World Dizzy. Magic Land Dizzy. Spellbound Dizzy. Dizzy Prince of the Old Folk. Fantastic Dizzy. And Crystal Kingdom Dizzy. There have been several, several different side games, but other than that, these are pretty much all the games ever made, and it is a shame. I mean, with each generation, some series just never get picked up. I know the Oliver Twins have been trying to get a brand new Dizzy game made for years, and they came close. I mean, they pitched up an idea for a 3D Dizzy game, but at the moment, I think Codemasters owns the rights to Dizzy, and in the day, if a game gets made or not, it's down to them. But there's always hope. You never know. One day they may revisit the series again. Unfortunately, I don't own an Amstrad anymore. We had one growing up, it was a family computer, and it was a fantastic computer. I have so many memories of it, and if I had the room, I'd love to get one again one day. But, for this review, I am using emulation. Now, I... I'm not the, the world's biggest fan of emulation. I think emulation has its place. If... If, if you cannot get the genuine game, the genuine system, or, if you can, but it costs you an absolute fortune, then I think, yeah, emulation does have its place. Plus, for doing, for doing gameplay reviews, it's actually one of the best ways to... If, you, if you've got a solid emulator that's running almost like you're playing the original hardware, 
you can get some actually good game gameplay footage off of it. But normally, if possible, I always prefer to play the general thing and actually record from that console or that computer. So, my final thoughts. This is not a game for everyone, and I imagine most modern gamers probably couldn't get into this game at all. But, this is how I view gaming. There is no real beginning, middle, and end. All there is, is just gaming. It's like art. You wouldn't look at art from just the last year or two and ignore the rest. No, you, you look at art throughout the, throughout the ages. And that's how I view video games. It is an odd game, but it's a classic. And if you're someone who grew up during the 8-bit computer, computer era, then this is a game you would definitely enjoy, and I seriously recommend it. It definitely gets the thumb approval. I want to thank you all for watching, and yes, the Panzer Dragoon Saga review is coming up next. So, check back in a week or so. Thank you for watching, and see you later.